Shalom Israel, Brother Don Nah, back again with another 30 for 30. I think this is day number 23. And um, we pushing forward towards the mark, man. You know, we're pushing this truth. And uh, I, I just want to give uh, a hearty Shalom to all the other brothers out there that's pushing this truth. Um, a hearty Shalom to them brothers Wayne and uh, uh, Brew Level, man, going hard in this, through the spirit. And everybody else is pushing this truth uh, to the four corners of the earth, um, condemning the wicked, um, waking our people up. Uh, another hearty shalom to all the um, Akwath, all the sisters out there that aren't usurping authority over a man, but teaching and spreading this word as well, effectively as possible and respectively as possible. Um, it's my heart's and prayer desire that all Israel might be saved. That it states in Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. And uh, this is why we do this. It's so our people can actually um, wake up and come back to these uh, law, statutes, and commandments so we can get out of this place that we're in today uh, at a low estate and put back on high to where we need to be. Uh, today's topic is going to be um, becoming apt to teach. It's going to be a good one, too, you know, because um, I know in Israel, there's, there's so many ways that you can be uh, that you can teach. And we and, and it's a it's very controversial because some people think, oh, you shouldn't teach like that. It's not going to be receptive. You shouldn't be teaching like that. It's too soft. Right. And so we just kind of going to examine how we should be as teachers through these scriptures, because as I stated last video, this is where we get our knowledge and our wisdom from to have all these nations that look at us like this is a wise and understanding people. And, and to be able to for them to do that, it starts at teaching. Right. It's something that we do. It starts at teaching. So we're going to jump straight into this. Go to the book of Second Timothy, chapter two, starting at verse twenty four. Right. It's Second Timothy, chapter two, verse twenty four. And it reads, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness instructing those oppo that oppose themselves, right? If God preadventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth, right? So when we teach some key words in here, we must not be given into strife. We shouldn't want to be teaching for the main, for the, for the purpose of getting into strife. I know when I first came into this truth, I had to check myself. Uh, and, and my mom kind of checked me too, because I was like, Man, I'm kind of getting nice with these scriptures, and I just love the fact that I can go in and, and cut up some Christians, right? I can just, I love the fact that I can go in and I can really do damage to these folks, you know what I'm saying, with this, through these scriptures. And it got to a point where I was looking forward to almost humili humiliating my brothers and sisters uh, because I, I started getting this understanding of the Bible. And, um... It's something that we got to check ourselves for. So when we when we when we become teachers, what does it say? And the servant of the Lord must not strive. So we shouldn't be coming into this thing looking for strife, looking to humili hum humiliate anybody, right? Looking to show off uh, our our new shoes and put down somebody else's old shoes. You know what I'm saying? Reading on, but to be gentle unto all men. When we come in, we got to be gentle in this thing. Right. is a is a way to go about things is a time and place for everything. But essentially, your foundation has to start with gentleness. Right. You have to be gentle unto all men apt to teach. You got to be patient in this thing. We're going to touch on patience because patience has a lot to do with even how the most high shows us how we are to be um, um, teachers. He shows us through his actions how patience he is. Right. He says. Uh, for I have long time holding my peace. What does that mean? That he's held his peace for a long time because he knew he was dealing with children. And he knew we, we wouldn't uh, uh, hearken to his voice. Read it on. In meekness. The brother Big Foss went into, into meekness uh, a couple days ago on his, on, on, uh, on, in his video, right? And when you look at meekness, it's really just talking about um, humbleness. So when you come into this thing, you got to become humble and meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Why do you have to come uh, humbly? Why do you have to come not prepared to uh, uh, to be in strife? 
and gentle because you're teaching those what it says in verse 25. You're instructing those that oppose themselves. People don't understand that when we when we go out into the highways and byways, when you teach your uh, your 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 father, your mother, your brothers and your sisters, your cousins, your grandma, you don't understand. We don't understand that we're teaching those that uh, that oppose themselves. Right. We're, we are already handicapped because they're handicapped in their, themselves. Because for a, such a long time, we've been taught that we were nothing. When you go and tell them that, hey, we are something and it's only us and it's only about us. They it, they can't take that because through this society, they have instilled in us something that is just deeply rooted in us for us to hate ourselves. And, it's, and it, the cold part is when you read this scripture, God intended it for that to happen. You know what I'm saying? It says in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. That's what we're going out here doing. We're, we're, t we're telling them that they're chosen and, and, and they want to say, nah, we're not. We're telling them we're the Israelites. They're saying, nah, we're the Gentiles. This just happened last weekend, right? We were teaching our people who we are. Somebody um, came up. He was a little knowledgeable about the Bible. He's standing there with his arms crossed. He said, but y'all do know we're, we're the Gentiles, right? And the crazy part is we got some of, so many of us that really want to be the Gentiles. Like who in their right, I don't understand who in their right mind would actually want to be the Gentiles. That's how destroyed in the mind we are, right? And that's why it says that we're instructing those that oppose themselves. And why are we teaching in this manner? Because if God pre-adventure will give them the repentance to the knowledge of the truth, because they might be like this today, but you just planting that seed. Pre-adventure, God can wake them up later. And it really takes it really takes all of these characteristics to, to let it sink into somebody's spirit to be like to be accept to be accepting to it. Because if you go in the wrong way, they're just gonna cast it, cast it behind them. You know? Now let's go to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, and verse 15, right? And it reads. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you uh, a reason of this hope that is in you. Now, a lot of times we read this and we stop right there. But the, 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 the crazy part is it's matching the, the, the scripture that we just read in um, Timothy uh, teaching us how to be apt to teach. It says, but sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason. So be ready at all times to give an answer. And when you give your answer, this is how you should give it. Uh, every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is within you <clears throat> with meekness and with fear. So with humbleness and with fear, hum with, with humility. Humility, knowing that, hey, look, I don't we don't bend in their shoes. You have to give them you have to answer the question as if as if somebody as you would want somebody to answer the question when you were in that same position, because a lot of a lot of us didn't know that uh, we were Israelites. And when we came into this thing, we were we received it. And it was probably because somebody related to us and conveyed it to us in a way that we can we were ready to accept it. They were they gave it to us in meekness and humble and hum in uh in, in a humility and a humble spirit, right? Let's read that again real quick. Because that's this is really good. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you. The hope that's in you is this faith, right? This this pure doctrine, right? That is in you with meekness and with fear. So with humbleness and with fear. Humbleness, no humbleness, knowing that you've been in their position. And what are you fearing? Let's go to the book of Leviticus 19 and 17. Right. You want to answer them with the fear of Leviticus 19 and 17. And it reads, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Right. This is what we're fearing when we're teaching. We're not, we, when we go and teach our brothers and sisters. We should not have any we we should not do it with malice. And when, when it when it says with meekness and fear, what are we fearing? We're fearing not overstepping that boundary of 
it turning into something that's hateful or something that is uh, uh, malicious, right? We don't want to overstep that because we're doing the work of the Lord. If it wasn't for the Lord, we wouldn't have this knowledge anyway. So when we're teaching his people, the people that the lost sheep that is supposed to go to us, con, nor with pride. So when we're teaching the lost sheep, the people that are supposed to go to, you know what I'm saying? We're not, we're not giving it with, from, from our step. We're not, and I, and he touched on pride and that's great because it really make it really ties in well. Cause a lot of us get into the spirit where it's like, well, I'm going to teach you how I want to teach it. And it's up to you to get, if you don't get it, that's just on you, right? That I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to alter how I, um, how I present my message to you, right? If either, either you're going to agree that it's true or not, right? And it's, and that's off. You got to take your pride out because this isn't your truth to give anyway. You're giving somebody else's truth. And when you give his truth, you got to give it the way he wants you to give it, right? So you got to give it with meekness and with fear, with humble and fearing not to overstep that boundary of transgressing the law against your brother, right? Um, let's see. Well, I, actually, right? So with meekness and fear. And you're understanding that <laughs> the understand that the people that you're teaching, right? The people that you're teaching is almost just the same as when you was in class, not even in the truth. When you was just in grade school. When you was in grade school, and everybody you at the time where nobody wanted to answer no questions. You sitting in class and um the teacher calls on some. No, she says, "Who wants to read aloud? Who is somebody got a volunteer?" And then nobody volunteers. She picks somebody, right? And Jerome, it's Jerome's time to speak, and he goes to read, and he he's kind of stuttering, and to to, to he to, to he to he, and everybody in the class is like, "You mean the Jerome? Do you mean the the word the? Come on, right? You know." And and at that moment right there, Jerome is thinking. I was a kid that stuttered, right? You see? And at that moment, that kid that stuttered, Jerome is thinking, I will never read again out loud. I don't care if the teacher calls on me. It's a it's a it's a pass for me. It's a no for me, dog. Right? I'm not going to I I don't want to read. Don't ask me to get up to solve no uh problem on the board during the during math time. Don't don't ask me to do none of that. Right? Because of the way that he was really trying to learn at this at this moment. And 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 you the, the cold part about it is he's reading and he even though he's saying to he to he his mind his mind even he's he's saying it over and over again, his mind is actually conceptualizing and he's actually learning how to read. And there's some endorphins that pop off that's that that excites him and knowing that he's getting it. But as soon as as soon as people, you know, what I'm saying, shout something out to tear him down. Now he shuts down. Now he doesn't want to read no more. Right now, knowledge becomes like handcuffs to him when it was about to be gold bracelets. Right. It was about to be pleasurable for him. You know what I'm saying? Um, And so that would kind of that would kind of um transfer over in today where we're in the truth and. uh <laughs> So many people, when we get in the truth, we become super bruised, right? Uh, I talk with my, my, uh, my ox and my aquas all the time about becoming super bruised. And really, you just becoming just weird. You know what I'm saying? You become super bruised to the point where you forgot where you were. You forgot that humility that, uh, that you were supposed to come with, knowing that you was in their position. So now, all the information that you done heard so many times that it's just second nature to you, the, the same information that you got, you're forgetting that you was at their their state. So, for example, somebody might be like, um, you might be teaching somebody and, 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 and they might be like, um, just a simple example. You telling them, you know, Christ looks like you. Can I, you know what I'm saying? Become the men in the purple overnight. I'm trying to tell you, look, bro, you know what I'm saying? It's like. Weird, we're weird. They say you you know Christ looks like you, and then you get an answer that's kind of like he does. I always thought he looked like you know what I'm saying the the white man. I always thought he oh he was always white, and then everybody now you're the teacher, but everybody in the background is just out of order at this point. 
sometimes even the teacher is out of order, right? Because they'll say this, and then all of a sudden it's, what? This, what? this man think Christ is white? Where have you been? Hiding under a rock? You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's like, it's the same thing what we're doing in class where it's talking about, to he? You mean the, Jerome? You mean the? T-H-E? You know, it's the same, and you get the same thing, and it deters people from the truth. You know, even if, if even if what you're saying is true, now they don't even want to come back to acknowledge, you know what I'm saying, what you were saying. You got to break these things down. And one thing that the Christian church does uh, so well is that they make a way for people to want to come back, you know. And when we're out there on the street and uh, we're given the we're given this pure doctrine, sometimes we got to find a way to make people want to come back. You know, we we give it to them straight. And sometimes that's good, but a lot of times we have to give it in a way that makes them want to come back, right? And so uh, it's, it's an analogy that I used the other night um, when I was uh, talking with my wife and, and, and one of my sisters, right? Uh, it was concerning something else, but it goes perfectly with this. You got to understand that when we give this truth, it's like pulling out a chair from underneath them. I'm going to tell you a quick story real quick, right? So I was in, I want to say, fourth grade. Now, I never cried in school. You know what I'm saying? I never cried in school, but this is the one, this is the one time I cried in school. I'm not going to lie, right? I was in the fourth grade, I believe, Miss Evans, Edomite teacher, right? I'm in her class, and uh, we're doing a project, and, uh, and I need, we all split up in groups, now, splitting up in groups, we're moving the tables. You just lied. This man. Look, we're, we're moving the... We're, this man's funny. Uh, we're moving the tables and we're moving the chairs, right? And as we're doing so, it's a lot of commotion going on, right? People are getting in their groups, getting their, moving, getting their book bags and their, their, their folders and all that stuff and moving. And in the midst of doing this, I need a chair. So I go over, not even realizing uh, this is somebody else's chair... I come in, I take the chair from, a, from, from under, I guess from underneath him, but at the time, I didn't see nobody there. Honest to God, I didn't see nobody there. I take the chair, and I proceed to walk away. And as I walk away, right, I hear this big boom, and I'm like, what the heck? And then immediately, uh, there's a brother named Aaron, right? An Israelite, a Jake, his name was Aaron. All, I, all, all you see is him on the ground screaming. I'm talking about his head down hit him. Hit the tile floor. He's screaming and crying, right? And I'm looking back like, what the heck? I got the chair in my hand. I'm kind of looking. I'm like, did I just do it? I mean, and you know, back then, that was a that was a real joke that people would take the chair from underneath you on purpose. And so, like, I'm like, please don't, please don't think I just did this on purpose, right? Because Aaron was one of them silent kids that didn't talk at all. He didn't bother nobody, no nothing, right? He was cool too. He wasn't really like a nerd or nothing. He was just that guy, you know what I'm saying? That might give a, a little laugh if you tell a joke in class, but he don't, he don't say nothing. So I'm like, please don't think I did this on purpose. And I took it from him. He hit his head and whatnot. Long story short, the teacher got on to me. She said, Ashton, what are, you, what are you doing? She said, how could you be so stupid? And it's funny, right? She said, how could you be so stupid? And this is what, and that's what that's what really made me cry, right? And Edomite, the Edomite teacher coming up to me and saying, "How could you be so stupid? How are you so stupid?" And I'm like, "I'm not stupid. I didn't even mean to do this." She took me outside. She tried to take me to the principal's office and everything, right? And so, and, and the the cold part is, she said, "How could you be so stupid?" And that's how that's how sometimes we got to be when we're when we're attacking this word and this truth, right? Some of the sometimes when we when we go about teaching and it's, you just kind of some i know we me and my brothers we do the work on the street right and sometimes we sitting back thinking like man we maybe we could have uh uh explained that a little bit better but even if you're just looking at videos right and you're watching a video sometimes some teachers just get so cringy to it's like bro come on bro how could you be so stupid he clearly doesn't know you know and he's humbly and, and he's humble and he's really trying to learn, but you're taking him for malice. You're taking him as if he's a scoffer and he's not, right? We got to be able to, to decipher the two, you know? And, um, and so we, and, and with, that, with that being said, going back to the story, right? 
in this truth, we have to un we have to we have to learn that we gotta once we pull that chair underneath them, we have to already have something prepared that's there, that's soft enough that can break their fall. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like we have to, and it's and it's it's a hard job for a teacher, but that's our responsibility, and that's what the Christian church does. Not really, but really, right? They um they tell you a whole bunch of lies and they make you feel comfortable, so you come back. Now us. On the other hand, we're taking something from we're we're ripping that chair under from underneath them, and we gotta quickly slide a pillow underneath there so they don't bust their head open and cry like like brother Aaron. You know, let's go to the book of James, chapter three and verse eleven, because this is gonna exp is explain it right. This is James chapter three and verse eleven. Does a fountain send forth the same place sweet water and bitter? Now this is a this is a question, right? I'm sure if you read the full context, um, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? You'll see that it's kind of a rhetorical question. Does a fountain send forth this at the same time, sweet water and bitter? And that's what we're doing. When we teach him, we become a fountain. We're a fountain and we're, and we're giving both that bitter and that sweet. And this is what I'm saying that when we take that, that, that chair underneath, which is bitter, we got to slide something sweet under there, which is that, that comfortability to, to bring them back. That if they have questions, they can always come back. Because when we when we're teaching, this is what we're doing. We're taking something that's been uh, indoctrin indoctrinated into their minds, right? These strongholds that they've grown a, a, attached to for so long, right? Something that they love. When we take that from them, and we give them nothing to fall on, it's like that turns that turns them into you. That's like taking a teddy bear from a little kid. And you don't, and you just turn away and you walk away forever. The next time that little kid sees you, he gonna hate you. He gonna start coming up to you, trying to beat on you, like, "Where's my teddy bear?" Right? You gotta give them something in return to make them wanna come back. And that's where the gentleness and the uh, um, the humility comes in play. Like, hey, look, bro, I know you've been taught all your life that Christ was white, but the 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 sweet thing is that he looks just like you. I know they lied to you. I know you. I know you. I know you. Um, been thinking this. But the sweet part is he looked like you. And the cold part about it is I used to be in your same position. I used to think the same way. So don't even be discouraged, right? Because I used to be just like you. But with time, we can break down these strongholds. We come into this thing strong. And, and honestly, instead of you being on that side, you can be over here on this side with us trying to wake up our people, you know? And that's just, and that's just how it is. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 28 and verse number 9. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse number nine, and it reads, whom shall he teach the knowledge? Whom shall he, he whom shall he make the, to understand the doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. You know what I'm saying? What do you say? Job 6, 25 and, and through 27. I'm going to get that later. I'll, whom shall he teach knowledge? Excuse me, Salaki. And whom shall he make to understand the doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. We gotta understand when we're teaching this thing, we're teaching it to babies. And before we even bring it out, right, while they're formulating their questions to ask you, uh um, in this state, they're not even really birthed yet. And if they are birthed, they're not even latched on to the to the breast yet. You know, they haven't even received the milk yet. So we gotta give it to them. You know what I'm saying? We gotta we gotta humble ourselves down and be patient enough for them to latch on a lot of times uh, uh um, with birth we have to the, the mother has to show the baby or, or teach the baby how to latch on to um receive the milk they don't always get it you know what i'm saying just off the strength of, of nature right sometimes you got to teach them and 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 with teaching them comes sometimes you got to repeat yourself sometimes you gotta they gotta let it sink in and see it multiple times and not only see it multiple times, they have to conceptualize why they're doing it, you know what I'm saying, to actually understand. So when you're telling them that Christ looks like you, not only are you telling them Christ looks like you, but you got to keep, you know what I'm saying, you got, sometimes you, if you, when you're teaching, to make your point, you give one thing, and that's like, okay. And then you give several other things, right, for them to meditate on. And so when they go away... It's like, okay, Christ looks like me, Christ looks like me, Christ looks like me. And it starts to stick, you know, just like when you when you want a baby to latch on, you constantly kind of guiding him, 
you know what I'm saying, towards the breast, you constantly guiding him until he actually gets it. And then even sometimes if he if he latches on, he might not he might not be sucking on it. Right. The right way to, to the point where he can actually receive the milk. So this is kind of like us giving them the knowledge and they don't really know where it's at. It, to put you in perspective, it's like this. Right. When you first come into the truth and you think that, you know, um, down at the fringe, just looking down at the fringes up. Oh, and I'm about to use that fringes as an example. Right. When you first come into this truth. Right. Um. We all know this knowledge. We know all of these things like we're the real Jews. We're not supposed to eat pork. We're supposed to wear fringes and all this stuff. And it gets and we we get it into us through repetition, through watching all these videos over and over again, through through um, talking amongst our peers. We get this from repetition. You know what I'm saying? And it kind of sinks in us. But we don't really get the knowledge. How we don't get how do we not get the knowledge? Because if you ask somebody in the truth, OK, we're supposed to wear fringes, but. How can you prove that with the Bible? And they'll say, man, let me Google it real quick. That should be second nature, right? Numbers 15 and 38. That's when you have actually took the repetition, right? You applied it and you're conceptualizing it. Now you're being weaned from the milk. Now you're being drawn from the breast. But before then, you have to, we, we got to understand the people that we're teaching, they still trying to get latched onto the breast. So we got to take our time. We got to be patient, you know? Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 22. In verse number 12, um, t -t 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 -t. let's read. For seven days we mourn for the dead, but a foolish or ungodly person causes a lifetime of grief. You know, don't visit stupid people or spend a lot of time talking with them. Avoid them. Let's go back to verse 12, right? For seven days we mourn for the dead, but a foolish or ungodly person causes a lifetime of grief. I'm going to open this up. I think I want verse 11. Yeah, verse 11. We mourn for the dead because they have no access to light, but we ought to mourn for fools because they have no access to intelligence. Got to understand, no disrespect to those that we're teaching, but you're coming as a fool, right? Even as children, we are fools. We don't know what's going on. And just like we mourn for the dead, because they have ac no access for light, this is hot because we ought to mourn for fools the same way because they have no access to intelligence. This is also tapping into being humi uh, to being humble, right? To being meek. We, should, we shouldn't get mad and frustrated when, when, when they just don't seem to get it. We should, we should be getting, you know, we should have a sense of mourning, uh, a, a sense of pity. And we should we should be thinking, well, if you don't get it, man, go up the block. You know, if you don't get it, it's just not for you. You're going to be destroyed. You know, we shouldn't be so, so ready to get to that point because we should have pity on them to know that, hey, look, they were they're a fool at this state and they don't get it. Let me try to figure out another way where I can explain it to them because I really want them to get this message that is sent from the most high God. And I'm, I'm blessed to understand it. But let me try to figure out a way because I'm so pitiful for you that you just can't understand. I know there's a way that you that you'll be able to get this. And it's kind of like if you have kids. Right. If you kind of have if you got kids and you're trying to explain to them, you know, um, if you're trying to explain to them something and they're just not getting it. Right. Are you going to get mad at your kid? Your, your kid like two years old, bro. You know. He don't really know the differences between things, right? He don't really grasp the concept of morals. When you're teaching them, you know, it's got to be, you got to have patience with them. And it's the same thing with these babes and the truth or these people or these babes that haven't even been uh, birthed yet, right? Because really in this truth, this is a sidebar, but in this truth, there's no such thing as a stupid question. I mean, or a stupid or a stupid question or a stupid answer, because I tell you right now. I was there before conscious, right? I'll tell you right now when you teach it and you get an answer. I guarantee you're going to get it, get it back. And it's important as a teacher to not just brush it off or get mad to actually to actually get down to the bottom of why they're asking that question or giving that answer, that response. Because nine times out of ten, it's going to make you a better teacher at the end of the day. 
Because now you know that ideology, that way of thinking. So when somebody else comes back to you with that same ideology, you already know where they're going. You know how to break it down, right? And it's more precise, right? And so these are, these are just things that uh, we got to pay attention to. Let's go to um, Proverbs 25 and verse number nine, right? We got to understand that these kids, it's like, and you got to understand when's the right time to give a message and when's the right time not to, right? And so like, a, many, a lot of times we'll be teaching and you'll know who wants to stay and who doesn't. Somebody might be passing by and if they're kind and they're, so it's like this. If you have a little kid and they're and they're constantly running around, it's there is say like back in the world is you had a you had a party or something, a birthday party or something like that. Right. You got your little kid. He's running around with all his friends. Right. And uh, and, and you want him to slow down. You call him over and uh, why you, you telling him, hey, look, son, junior, you can't be doing this. And the whole time you're talking to him, he's like. Looking at, looking back at his friends, you know, and he's really not paying you no attention. And you're like, son, you need to slow down. You're running through the house. You almost hit this. You almost hit that. You're going to get hurt. And he's just kind of looking like, OK, yeah, yes, I understand, daddy. Right. And then and he goes by his business. You think he understood anything that you just told him? No. Sometimes we got to realize when there's a time and place for everything and Right then and there is probably not the right time. It's just like when you're at camp, somebody might be walking walking by, and they might be the same way, right? Their their friends might be pulling them away, and um, they're looking back at their friends like, but they kind of want to stay, but they still want to roll with their friends. Sometimes you got to understand when to push that envelope to to give them that full breakdown, or sometimes you got to get straight to the point and be like, "Hey, look, bro, you're an Israelite. According to the Bible, the Bible is about you. You need to repent, come back to these law, statutes, commandments as an Israelite man, so we can get up out this position, man. Shalom, be blessed. You know what I'm saying? Because if we're being honest, even with the little kid situation, it would be tough for us as parents because we don't want them to like run and crash into anything, but. At the same time, you don't want your 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 wise words to go unnoticed or to be in vain. Sometimes it's, it's, it's what they say is let boys be boys. Sometimes you got to let your boys be boys and they explain it to them afterwards, you know. And so you got to have that discernment to 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 know when to to or know how to teach. Right. When to give what at what time. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 25 and verse number nine. Now we're, about to, now we're about to shift into a, a, a different area of teachings um, known as debating, right? Let's go into debating. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not, not a secret to another, right? So when you go into this, you want, you, it's okay. So a lot of people say, man, the truth in, the, in this faith, we're not supposed to be debating, you know, but you're supposed, you're supposed to debate thy cause, you know? It's okay to debate that cause, but you got to be smart with it, you know? You know, you got to know when, you gotta know when to, to, to open and, and, and you got to know when to close it, right? And that's um, like both ways as far as, you know, you got to know when it's going too far and you got to know when to bring it on home, right? Let's go to the book of Sirach chapter 22 and verse 24. And it reads, Fumes and smoke appear before the flames do. Insults come before the violence. So we got to understand, just like, uh, just like before you see um, a house on fire, you see the fumes and the smoke. And then the flames appear. The same thing with insults. So when you're debating with somebody, what did Leviticus uh, 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 19 and 17 say? You shouldn't hate your brothers in your heart, right? And, and, and when you give an answer to somebody, give it with meekness. So and, and with fear of not trying to hate your brother in your heart. So you don't want it to get there. So and insults come before the violence. This is telling this is telling us a lot of things. Right. One is telling us, hey, look, it's, it's warning you. Hey, when insults start flying, know what's about to what's about to pop off. And it's also telling you, hey, don't even don't even start giving insults. Right. When it gets to that point, when you start insulting each other, you got to think, OK, now it's just the flesh because I know. It's, it's, it's a temptation at that point because I know this is my brother, right? I know he's not getting it or maybe I'm not getting it, but it shouldn't ever get to the point where we're insulting each other, you know? Because after insults becomes violence and after violence, man, the friendship is, is gone. 
And these are, these are kind of uh, some things that, that you'll get into when you teach. And if you fall short on these, you'll never see that person walk back up to you again. Because the whole goal is to, uh, is to plant a seed for it to grow. And so you, you want to build like a camaraderie, a, 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 safe, a safe space, especially for our people, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. You want to be able for them to come back if they, got any, if, if they got any questions, to actually hit you up through social media, uh, uh, whether you give your phone number out to them, if they got any questions or, or if they just need to confide in somebody. We're supposed to be that people, not the Christian church. You know what I'm saying? So j just because we're trying to, it's this whole beef between the Christian church and us, right? But... On both levels, there's things that we can learn from them that they do well because they do got a lot of our people on that crack. Right. Christianity is a drug, but we can take some of the things that they do, incorporate it into this truth. Right. And sh actually show love in a gentle way and, uh, and humbleness. Right. Then we can proceed to to be to spread the way we're supposed to spread effective communication. Come you want to you want to you want to have this thing in the most effective way possible. So you can win the most people as possible, because if you if you come at it the wrong way, you're in violation of these scriptures. Not only are you in violation of these scriptures, but now you you got their blood on their hands if they never come back. Right. And um, and, and don't get me wrong, there's a time and place for everything. Now, if a scoffer comes up and you got to deal with it, you got to You got to deal with it. There's only so much a man can take before he's pushed to that limit. Even even the most high has a wrath after he's held his peace for so long. But if somebody's just press, pressing the envelope, sometimes they need a, a strong rebuke, you know. But from a foundational standpoint, uh, at the beginning of every argument or not argument, but every conversation, every lesson being taught, every breakdown, right, every question being answered from a foundational standpoint, we need to come at it with gentleness, humbleness, meekness, right? We say they try to hit you with that Second Corinthians eleven and six. They do, you know what I'm saying? Let's go to um. What I got next? Let's go to First Corinthians. Uh, First Corinthians fourteen and forty. First Corinthians. 14 verse 40 and it reads let all things be done decently and in order right so when we look at this all things should be decent and in order so when you out there teaching everything should be decent all the conversation should be decent what does this mean this word decent it really means you know what i'm saying child friendly you know you don't want to be having conversations that a, that a child couldn't be be around you for the most part. Now, sometimes you do have to get into some some rated R type of of of, of conversations dealing with um, sexuality and 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 um, you know things of things of the things of the uh, things of the such. But for the most part, you want it to be decent. You want it to be a word for everyone, right? You want to and, and for brothers, you want to stay in order. I love I love actually. You know, I'm going to camp every week because it teaches me as a, as a man and I don't even have no kids yet, but I'm sure it's going to trickle over to when I have kids to have the same temperance, you know, kind of let. And, and I think it goes the same across the board for me as Rael and brother Yeshaya. You know what I'm saying? That we um when we teaching, you kind of stand in post and somebody's breaking it down. That's not you. You're kind of like you got to have some type of decorum or some type of temperance to not overstep your boundary, right? To know that that teacher is teaching. And so he might be teaching, you might be like, man, I would have went this way with it. I would have brought out this, you know? And it takes a type of temperance to control yourself and to be like, hey, look, my time is gonna be on the way. You know, you know, brother is breaking it down nicely. Even though I would break it down this way, he's still getting the point across, right? And it takes it takes some um, um, temperance to control that inner self, to know when to shut up, right? To know when to shut up, to know when to uh, be subjective to what's going on at hand. And we're, and we're not being subjective to that brother, in a sense, but we're being subjective to the order, right, uh, uh, of the most high. The most high said everything should be done decently in order. So when you're in order, you're being subjective to, to making him look good, right? You don't want to be all over the place and whatnot, right? Let's go to the book of Psalms, 
chapter 145 and verse number eight. And it reads, the Lord is gracious. And this is how we should be. As teachers, this is how we should be. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. So when we're out here putting our work in, these bricks in, this is how we should be. Gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger and great with mercy. You know, our words should be gracious. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be um, triggering. You know, our words should be gracious. They shouldn't be triggering and our actions shouldn't be triggering. We shouldn't, somebody shouldn't ask something, humbly ask something and we, we, we bring out a scripture and then after we bring out the scripture, we look at them like, now what? You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't be doing that. We shouldn't be coming up with words that we know are going to set off triggers, especially when we're talking to uh, 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 our, our sisters. Because we know in this society, our sisters are quick. You know what I'm saying? They're quick to get agitated, quick to get triggered. You know what I'm saying? So we should be saying stuff that are gracious, soft to the ears, right? The wicked is, the wicked is wise enough to, to, to talk to you with smooth words, right? So how come we can't? You know, we should be wise enough to talk with smooth words too. Full of compassion. Everything that we do should be full with compassion. When we teach somebody, we got we're, the compassion that's compelled within us is the reason that we're doing it. We want our people to wake up. So we're using that passion, right? And we're, we're displaying it. We're conveying it. Don't ever do anything half, half behind, right? You want to do everything full fledged in, in love and compassion. We want to be slow to anger. Remember what I said about the, the children, right? These are children. Just like if you had a kid, you wouldn't be, you would be slow to anger because this man not, this man just came out the womb. He's not going to know not to steal a cookie, right? He knows cookies taste good and he wants one. He's going to get it, right? You got to tell him no. Even if he does it again, you got to, you got to, what, what, what we talk about, the repetition, right? And after he gets the repetition, then he can conceptualize it. Then he'll know, right? Train, train up a child the way he should go. So we got to be slow to anger and we got to be great with mercy, right? Just like when a kid does something, he does it again. It's obvious he doesn't, he doesn't understand. So you got to have some, take some time, be merciful about it, right? And make sure he understands. And then when he actually understands, then that's when you can start letting your wrath come upon him, come upon him. Because at this, at that moment, he's done conceptualize it. He knows right from wrong and he's choosing not to do it anyway. Before he gets there, you got to have some sense of, of mercy, right? And so with that, man, I'll yield my time. We got to remember that we got to be apt to teaching this thing, coming fully with meekness and the fear of the Lord that we don't transgress his laws, specifically Leviticus 19 and 17, where it says we're not supposed to have any hate in our heart. I'm Brother Donal, giving all glory to the Most High through the name of his uh, only begotten son who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Y'all have a blessed day. Shalom.